Extreme climate and punishing conditions make the Thar the most inhospitable eco-region in the Indo-Pacific. This is over 200,000 square kilometers of sand dunes, craggy rocks and salt lake beds. And yet, it is the most densely populated desert in the world. We are in the western part of Rajasthan. More than 60% of the state is the Thar. But things have begun to look different. What used to be vast stretches of ochre dunes and cracked earth has been giving way to patches of greenery. Between 2001 and 2023, the region witnessed a 38% annual increase in greening. This for a region known for its long, dry spells, droughts and erratic rainfall. This year, we also have seen that the average rain should be 200 mm. In the past, we have seen the whole time of the rain. The rain has become 300-400 mm. So, the rain has increased the rain every day. The rain has increased the rain. बारिश ज्यादा हो रही है और मैं मानता हूं जानता है कि इसका कारण ये हरियाली है इसकी वजह से बारिश ज्यादा हो रही है। For many farmers like Chunaram, this is a positive change. The 47-year-old has been able to increase his range of production on his farm about 150 kilometers from Jodhpur. पहले लोग जो परंपरागत तरीके से खेती करते थे वही खेती करते थे हाइब्रिड बीज वगैरह शीट्स ये यूज में नहीं लेते थे तो उत्पादन कम होता था अब नई टेक्नोलॉजी है ये विज्ञान का युग है तो टेक्नोलॉजी के हिसाब से लोगों के अंदर जागरूकता आई है और उसको उपयोग करते हैं तो उत्पादन भी बढ़ रहा है चूनाराम नाउ ग्रोज बाजरा वीट एंड जीरा बिटवीन मिड जून एंड अक्टूबर वाइल द मॉनसून रेन हेल्प हिम ग्रो मूंग This year, his moong harvest alone is expected to earn him around three and a half lakh rupees. लोगों के जीवन में खुशहाली आई है हर चीज में तो उतरो उतर सुधार हुआ इसमें जो पहले की जीवन सेली और अब जीवन सेली में परिवर्तन आया है. So what really is going on in the Thar, historically one of the major hot deserts of the world? We spoke to Professor Vimal Mishra from IIT Gandhinagar, who conducted a study to understand why the Thar Desert was turning green, defying expectations. His study reports a 64% increase in rainfall between 2001 and 2023. But that, he points out, isn't the only reason. We were expecting that this may be because of increasing rainfall. Uh, because when you have more and more water availability, more number of rainy days during the monsoon season, and that could uh, enhance your uh, greening. But to our surprise, this greening was equally contributed by the human interventions. So increased population density, people started exploring options that how to thrive agriculture, even if in this very complicated and complex ecosystems. Encouraged by what seemed like a thawing of harsh conditions has led to more and more communities to experiment with agriculture. Perhaps the primary anthropological reason, as Professor Mishra points out, for the unusual surge in vegetation. In Barmer, about 200 kilometers from Jodhpur, 50-year-old Ashuram once relied principally on rearing livestock during the dry season. Farming was possible only during the rains. पहले तो क्या था पहले यहाँ पे बोरिंग था नहीं जब इतनी हरियाली नहीं थी अभी बोरिंग हो गए सब खेती बोरिंग से होते हैं तो सब हरियाली हो गई with access to electricity, groundwater pumping has become an easy solution for many like Ashura. CLA mein bhi hoti hai aur Soma se mein bhi hoti hai. Pehle ek baar hi hoti thi. Abhi do baar kaise kar liye thai? Eh abhi to sab boring kar diya na. Pehle boring nahi tha hamari idhar. Tab ek baar hi hoti thi to barish hoti thi to hoti thi nahi to kuch bhi nahi hota tha. On the surface, what looks like a slow transitioning of a desert into a more habitable environment has simultaneously drawn more and more communities to the region. 
Between 2000 and 2020, the Thar witnessed the highest population growth amongst all 14 major deserts globally. Some areas showed a 50 to 800 percent increase in urban areas. Urban expansion cannot happen if uh, the, this is not supported by the livelihood. And uh, so you need water, you need energy. I think both are available. But beyond the short-term gains, ecologists and desert communities are beginning to question what this transformation truly means. Chetan Mishra has been studying desert ecosystems for years and finds the trend worrying. According to him, however, the trend began much earlier. Introduction of Indira Gandhi Canal and canal irrigation in this region. So that has brought, uh, you know, uh, more than 70% area under the cultivations, which earlier was uh, fallow land or the grasslands. Post-independence, successive Indian governments took large-scale measures to green the Thar, focusing on afforestation and vast irrigation projects. And now, the second change, the, when the rural electrification happened, all the infrastructure facilities increased, people were able to tap groundwater as well, because the canal was still not reaching uh, at a lot of places. Uh, so the other option for irrigation, the boreal water becomes the second most used uh, options here. If you see that uh, groundwater exploitation map, you will see this region is becoming more darker red. So the groundwater exploitation has also increased area under agriculture. Groundwater exploitation in terms of excessive irrigation and unchecked bore well use are now beginning to have consequences. Water logging is one of them as is increased salinity in soil, Chetan points out. If too much irrigation is happening in some part of the desert, it is not good for the soil. That increases the salinity of the soil. So in many areas you see a lot of uh, irrigation is happening. The saline water is being used in many places. So the, you may get few crops in a short period of time, but in the longer run it is harming the soil. This change in climate and traditional livelihood systems hasn't worked well though for everyone, even in the short term. For Rajasthan's pastoral and agro-pastoral communities, the taking over of grazing lands for farming has cost them dearly. In the Churu district's Gotaru village, Jagmal and his 80-year-old father have not just witnessed changing weather, but also a risk to their livelihood. As more and more grazing land is being turned into farms, access is becoming difficult. Herders are being pushed out, often forced to graze their animals in degraded jungles. <laughs> The rapid greening of a dry land, experts point out, goes completely against the grain of a desert ecosystem. Artificially changing an environment potentially means eroding it of its natural defences and innate resilience. Definitely planting trees and putting afforestation is not a good solution to make a desert more productive. Because a lot of those plantation ideas actually led to the invasive species like Prozabi Zuliflora. And that is happening even now. Deserts are not an uh, unproductive ecosystem. They are instead the most resilient ecosystem that can sustain long periods of drought, maybe some fire incidents. A lot of degradation can happen, but if we leave the system on its own, it has its capacity to regain its uh, natural state. So that, that resilience needs to be understand, uh, understood when we think about managing this landscape. This place where we are in right now, it was full of Prosopis juliflora or Babool around eight years back and then uh, we extracted those uh, invasive uh, shrubs and then planted native varieties here. 
attempting to reverse some of the damage and take locals back to time-tested practices, the Sankalp Taru Foundation has been working in the region for the last 13 years. Since then, they have planted over 7 lakh native trees as well as shrubs, species resilient to Rajasthan's arid conditions. So when we selected the species, we were mindful of the fact that we have to plant native forestry varieties of thar. And we selected some of the fruit bearing ones as well, um, so that the birds also get their own share. And you can see the jamun is right now blossoming here. And then uh, the bird has already made a nest just next to this jamun tree. This is 70-year-old Sarvaram's pomegranate plantation. More than 25 acres of fruit trees that the foundation helped him set up. The pomegranate is a hardy, water-efficient fruit, well-suited to the region's dry conditions. In the winters, these fruits fetch Sarvaram up to 10 to 12 lakh rupees. Moreover, he is learning key lessons on soil health and water conservation from the Sankalp Taru team. The team has trained and employed about 2,000 locals so far. So this is the micro drip irrigation system, which in fact saves 60 to 70 percent of water uh, while watering a tree. So, uh, but then it requires maintenance because sometimes sand may clog the drip irrigation system, so we have to maintain them. Uh, but then it really automates the process. Whenever the soil moisture levels are less, our sensors do tell us, and this irrigation system starts functioning. The thar, despite its extreme climate, has always been known to support a rich diversity of animals. More than 40 species of mammals are known to have lived in these vast deserts. But desert wildlife depend on open habitats. But duck grassland is suitable for species like desert fox, desert cat, spiny tail lizards. These are the species which cannot survive in the woodland. So if woodlands are taking over those open land, this, uh, it's not a good news for those species which are adapted to the openness. Small steps towards restoring the ecosystem, Apurva tells us, is beginning to show results. Locals have been witnessing a return of biodiversity, from birds to jackals, hyenas and snakes in their four-year-old forest in Gotaru, one among six native forest patches Sankalptaru has helped revive. But the next few years will be crucial to determine the role the thar will play on the subcontinent. If the frenetic pace of unscientific greening and groundwater exploitation continues, it could reverse gains in the long term, risking food security and the livelihoods of thousands. Thar as desert now plays a major part in ecosystem, both positively and negatively. And negative aspects are like dust storms, right? So dust storms might go down when you green the thar, but it may also suppress the rainfall, who knows? Because, uh, you know, you will cool down the this very hot uh, part by putting more water on the surface and that can change the circulations and climate. What would happen to climate and other things if uh, we have a very intense greening over thar? I don't think we know right now. Thanks for watching Eco India. If you like the story, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to scroll.in on YouTube.